Well, Paul's message came from Jesus. It's in Acts 20, 22 through 24. And it's after Jesus ascended. And Luke records Paul's words in Acts 20, 22 through 24. And now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. That's Paul, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, so Paul was taking this message into cities. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Verse 24, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news or to the gospel or to the message of God's grace. So that was Paul's message that he wanted to proclaim clearly. It was the good news or the gospel of God's grace. Now in Acts 26, 16 through 18, Paul talks about the time the ascended Jesus gave him this assignment of taking the good news of grace into cities all over the world. So starting in verse 16, Paul writes, or Luke records the, Jesus giving Paul this assignment. So starting in verse 16, for I, Jesus, have appeared to you, Paul, so this is the ascended Jesus appearing to Paul and giving Paul this assignment. For I, Jesus, have appeared to you, Paul, to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen from me and what I will show you. So there's ongoing revelation that Paul was going to get from Jesus concerning the gospel of grace, more detail, more fullness of the gospel. When we understand the gospel of grace, we go to Romans, we go to, the, to Galatians, we go to Ephesians. That's where the heart of the gospel of grace is. And the gospel of grace is everything God has done for us in Christ. It's what Jesus did at the cross for us. It's Christ living his life in us. And we're going to look more about that. But the ascended Jesus said to Paul, I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen from me and what I will show you. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles, and I am sending you to them to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those sanctified by faith in me. This is the heart of the message that Jesus gave Paul. It's, it's receiving forgiveness by faith. It's being sanctified or being purified of all sin or cleansed from all sin by faith. Uh, forgiveness is my sin record has been completely cleared forever. Sanctification is our heart has been completely cleansed of sin forever. The purification of sin forever. And it comes by faith in Jesus. It's not works. It's not uh, disciplines. It's not devotions, it's not dedication, it's not commitment, it's not my own devotion. It is simply by faith in Jesus and what he did for us at the cross, which is grace. And, and him dying for all of our sins, him resurrecting, him declaring us righteous through faith in Jesus and, and receiving forgiveness. It, it's a very powerful message. It is the gospel. Paul expounds on it in Romans, he expounds on it in Ephesians, he expounds on it in Galatians. Now we first see Paul communicating this message in Acts 13, 38 through 39. He goes into a Galatian city and he proclaims the forgiveness of sins through faith in Jesus. Now I always thought I had to ask for forgiveness, but what we see is Jesus is sending Paul on a, on a mission with this message of grace. And Paul is asking people to receive forgiveness. Paul is not asking people to ask God to forgive them. That was not the assignment Jesus sent him on. It's the message that's communicated by so many Bible teachers and pastors where, where they're telling people, you need to ask God to forgive you. Well, that's not a biblical message. The biblical message of the gospel of grace is God is asking us to receive by faith complete forgiveness. 
so that when we receive forgiveness, we possess forgiveness rather than spend our lives requesting forgiveness. This is the gospel. This is the powerful message of grace that Jesus sent Paul on to proclaim. Again, we see Paul talking about it in, in Ephesians, in Colossians, in Galatians, in Romans. It's the complete message of what God did for us in Christ at the cross and the resurrection of Christ and the Christ coming to indwell us. We learn more about this message of grace that Jesus gave Paul in Galatians chapter 1, 10 through 12, which reads, Paul writes, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Now, what he's talking about there is with his message. Basically saying, if I'm trying to win the approval of, of religious leaders in Jerusalem, of other religious leaders in the cities that I go into, if I'm trying to win their approval with my message, then I'm not seeking God's approval with my message. I'm not seeking to please God with what I teach. I'm seeking to please people with what I teach. If I were still trying to please people, he said, I would not be a servant of Christ. Now, you see where it says servant of Christ. Recall back in the verses that we just read momentarily ago in Acts 26, 15 through 18, the ascended Jesus sent Paul to be his servant by sharing the gospel of grace with people, to receive forgiveness by faith, to receive being sanctified by faith. Sanctification isn't a process that happens over time, which is what is consistently taught. Being sanctified is being purified at one point in time when we place our faith in Jesus of all sin. So just for me personally, if I was seeking the approval of spiritual leaders, of church leaders, of religious leaders, I wouldn't be communicating, communicating this message today. I wouldn't be communicating the message to accept forgiveness, not ask for forgiveness. Because that's not a message that's popular. That, that's a message that um, you will get ridiculed uh, by, um, by religious leaders. So Paul was communicating this message that we're completely forgiven by faith. We're completely sanctified by faith. We're completely righteous by faith. We're not followers of Christ, but we're people who are filled with Christ. It's, it's, it's the message that, that Jesus sends Paul to communicate in cities all over the world. Unfortunately, this message isn't being communicated in its fullness. Part, parts of it is, but not in its fullness. The majority of believers that I know um, or I've met have never really heard the fullness of the gospel of grace. Okay, let's, let's see what Jesus, what Paul writes about Jesus giving him this message. Paul says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? This is in Galatians 1, 10 through 12. Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, now notice what he says, if I were still trying to please people, which meant at one point in time, he was trying to please the religious leaders in Jerusalem. But after his encounter with Jesus, he went from trying to please religious leaders to seeking only to please Jesus with what he taught and what he preached. He said, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, this is verse 11 of Galatians 1, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it by any man. Rather, this gospel that I teach and that I preach and that I proclaim, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. That takes us back to Acts 26, 15 through 18. It takes us to Acts 20, 22 through 24, that this gospel of grace that Paul proclaims came directly from the ascended Jesus. 